Shanto Honian says, incoming PGY1 advice. So postgraduate year one residency training, it doesn't matter what your specialty is. My advice is, and I can just tell you from my own experience, it's very hard to advise now. And I'll tell you why. There's a, there's a humility that starts to arise when you realize you don't know anything about anyone else. You can't. All you can speak from is your own experience. And even that, you can only speak from your own present experience because there's nothing else. So you could talk about, well, when I was a resident, I learned this and I learned that and I learned this and this is the advice I'd give you. But all of that is a phantom. It's all an echo. It's all a story. So if I'm giving advice now about being a PGY1, and this, by the way, I don't know where this is coming from. It just, it comes from emptiness when you just drop the ideas of what you're supposed to say, what you're supposed to say to a PGY1 because I used to train PGY1s and PGY2s and sub I's and everybody, the whole spectrum. Uh, 10 years at Stanford doing that, right? And then afterwards at UNLV. When you drop all of that, what you can say is, okay, you're gonna go through something that most humans never go through, which is you're gonna have other human lives in your hands. You're gonna do that under conditions of sleep deprivation, under conditions where your mentors that are there to help you might actually be actively working to humiliate you because they themselves are wounded, they themselves are insecure, they themselves are, are afraid someone will look in the deepest part of them, which is I'm never good enough no matter what I do. And you being close enough to training know that part because it's in all of us the part that feels fundamentally broken. It doesn't matter how confident you are in the externals. It doesn't matter how well you did in school. It doesn't matter how you feel like, oh man, I'm really called to do this. In the deepest part of your identity as a separate self, that first inflection from that primordial awareness into oh, I'm separate. And that happened at a very, very, very young age. There's the core wound of separation, which is, I'm not enough. And you know what? You're right. How can a something that's separate from the whole, knowing that there is only the whole, ever be enough from its own perspective? It can't. But from the perspective of reality, of course it's enough. It's always been enough. It's the perfection of the entirety showing up as the particular that apparently thinks it's separate. So knowing deeply that this internal shame that you, you're not good enough, that you're gonna hurt somebody, that they're gonna figure out that you're an imposter, that you should never have even been led into medical school, or worse yet, you have this high degree of confidence because you're compensating for this internal thing. And, and, and many people in, in medicine and in, in physicians in particular have this kind of deep drive to prove that they're worth something. So they have an accomplishment mindset from very young. And if they look too deep, they don't, they don't like what's there, which is this fear, this deep fear that they're fundamentally broken and someone's gonna figure it out. So let's just keep doing the things to show myself and the world that I'm not broken, I'm better than everybody. And so PGY1 will quickly challenge all of your defense structures. So if you go in knowing that, if you go in open, if you go in willing to be hurt by everything you see, in other words, feel the pain of that patient, don't take it as your pain, but know what it is and let it be felt fully, but also do that work on yourself. It doesn't matter. You don't need time to do this. You're in the middle of seeing 20 patients and you're on call and it's two in the morning. All it takes is sit down before you start charting, take a deep breath in, out, drop all your attention into the body, into the body field, that field of sensation that we call body. And notice that everything, all the sensations there are swimming in this ocean of awakeness, of awake, still presence. This peace that passes all understanding is always and already you. You're swimming in it. 
It's why the, you know, the, the famous thing about the fish doesn't know it's in water. It's looking for water. It's looking for something. And it's always here. And all it takes is a breath, 30 seconds of noticing that, and you realize at your core, you were never broken. There's nothing to heal. Everything is unfolding perfectly, including that screaming patient's family that's threatening you and angry, or that attending that's berating you, or that co-resident that's apparently slacking off and you have to cover for. It's all exactly right. And you do the next thing and you realize you're not even doing it. It's just life living itself. And that's all it takes. And all your training, all the conditioning, all the software will run itself. It will. Trust in that. And keep reading and doing all that to condition the software. That's going to happen. Keep learning. That's going to happen. But it's this that's the core. We talk about burnout. We talk about uh, resilience. We talk about sustainability. All of those are words. This is the only sustainability. This is the only resilience. This is the only cure for burnout is realizing who is it that's burned out? Can you burn this out? This that you are ultimately, right? And that's not to say you won't be stressed. That's not to say the body-mind won't be overworked and need, need things, need family, need friends, need lover, need food, need nutrition, need exercise, need sleep, need a therapist, need whatever it is, all that can be true. But the deepest truth, that's the advice, is tuned to that whenever you can. It's the bedrock. 